And since two years ago, since two year go- years ago's WrestleMania, when we were there, no. things have changed. AEW is now over a year old. The wrestling business as a whole is, you know, at its peak, impact is kind of back. Um, AEW is getting ratings around a million. Um, and here's the thing. With COVID and all that's going on, WrestleMania isn't as special as it normally would be. Welcome, everybody, to the Ring Generals podcast. My name is Nick Neen, and alongside me is Easy E, Eric Santos. What's cooking, guys? And of course, my main man, the RKJ man. Uh, the RKJ man. <laughs> you ruined it, bro. <laughs> you ruined it. Let's talk that well, talk, y'all, hypocritical Nick. It's the sauce, Alexander, and you're watching the Ring General podcast. Turn this man around. Turn this man around. Subscribe, like, and comment. But raise a glass in the sky and salute the Ring General. That's right. That's yeah, we, right. Hey, guys, we have a giant show uh, today. In what was a week that, like, I didn't really think there'd be a lot to talk about. And because of certain things with WWE and the AEW Impact stuff and a big UFC event happening this weekend, we have a lot to talk about. So we're going to try to get it done in an hour or less. Uh, and but it will be great talk, and you know we're super excited to get on this podcast. But of course, like I gotta ask, how are we doing, guys? How are we doing on this beautiful uh, Thursday afternoon when we're recording? Um, what's up, guys? What's going on? Man, excited. Uh, I think just I think after last week's show from Dynamite made me be a wrestling fan, and there is hope for wrestling. You can say that maybe around the summer it was kind of like a dark time for the industry but it looks like there might be a shed of hope for the future in 2021 not just for pro wrestling uh but also for mma and boxing it seems promising for next year kind of like how 2020 started but maybe for 2021 might be starting for a good year and uh i'm excited for it i guess you can say i'm back to being a pro wrestling fan again i I guess yeah it's that's the way to say it. <laughs> I, I love to hear that, Eric. I love to hear that. I mean, that, that's just the positivity that we need and the positivity that the wrestling business, you know, needs. We're, we're starting to get fans slowly back at AEW. You can start to hear them a little bit more. That was kind of their thing. Um, WWE's doing its own thing. It's been pretty good lately. We're going to get into potentially them going in the wrong direction in a second. But RKJ, pose it to you. How are you doing today? How are you doing with everything? The wrestling business is kind of back. There's craziness going on. How you feel on starting this podcast off here this Thursday? Man, I, I am so excited to talk about this podcast. And then I'm excited to watch Cam Newton pay for his stripper baby models and baby mamas and Instagram baby mamas today as the Patriots try to make a comeback in that AFC race. And, uh, you know, I've been trying to be positive, Nick. I really have. My brother and I were talking the other day, and he said, Ryan, that's the next step. As you're as you grow as a man, you need to be a little bit more positive. Two <laughs> times you're saying in these situations we're fucked, but I'm gonna have to say <laughs> this, buddy, we're fucked with this WrestleMania card coming up. Okay, I'm sorry. This is going to have to be negative in this situation because what I saw from WrestleVotes, who if if any of you guys watch basketball or even football, he's the Wojnowski, he's the Shams, he is in football terms the Ian Rappaport, Adam Schefter of wrestling, he or she, um, because that card that was just announced just now as the potential for WrestleMania, which I think we can all agree will probably end up being the final card. It looks like shit. Yeah. And, okay. So RKJ, what he's talking about here is what we're going to start the podcast off with. And we're going to start negative or maybe we can turn it positive before we get into Later. all the fun stuff. Yeah. Before we get into all the fun stuff, of course. So what RKJ is talking about is WrestleVotes, very reputable uh, wrestling um, Twitter account that's really been breaking some news and tends to not be wrong like many others. Um, they posted this today uh, after after posting a, a tweet yesterday about some information about WrestleMania. They then tweeted this three hours ago. Uh, a source stressed nothing is close to official or concrete. That is a working idea. The following is what's being considered for WrestleMania. Reigns versus Goldberg, Edge versus Orton, and interesting twist, McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar versus Keith Lee. Lots of variables in play, especially the attendance factor 
end quote. RKJ, I know what you think about this. So Eric, I'm going to push it to you. When you hear a tweet like that from a reputable source, they did preface that this is stuff being considered. It's not being jotted down as official. But when you first hear something like this, what are your first thoughts? Part of me wants to say that it is going to be official that they are going to be pushing for the match between Goldberg and Reigns, something to make up from this year's WrestleMania. That didn't happen because Goldberg went out to face Braun Strowman. Roman Reigns was scrapped out. Uh, obviously, we know why. Uh, so I think that's the reason why they want to go for that. So having Roman Reigns as the heel and making Goldberg as the babyface, while we made it like it or not, we're going to have to, like, in the narrative, we're going to be pushed as backing Goldberg because Roman Reigns is the heel. So we got to be on Goldberg's side. We got to cheer for him so he can take the title away from Roman Reigns. While that's being said, there's also another part of me where I want to say, okay, maybe this might not be finalized because things get in the way. Royal Rumble, other pay-per-views before WrestleMania, uh, something happens on Raw or SmackDown or NXT, you know, shows can happen, which can definitely change up the, the course of what the main event is going to be for WrestleMania. Uh, you know, or it's just sometimes maybe the schedule just doesn't go with the care with the wrestlers themselves, or maybe they didn't say they didn't seem to like the idea, and they just say, okay, I'm out, I'm not doing this main event at WrestleMania, and they get somebody else. So it's kind of like one of those things where, you know, when you're at work, somebody gets called out, they bring somebody in, and then they start, you know, going to work. So there's I'm split be- between those two things because things can happen, uh, yeah, but. If it's you know legit of having the main event of WrestleMania, uh, Reigns and uh, Goldberg, if it's finalized, I uh, I don't seem to care um, because to me it looks to me that I'm focused more on what else is going on in the other part of the wrestling world because it seems to me and we'll talk about that late, a little bit later. Yeah. It seems more exciting than what's being presented for WrestleMania, Orton and Edge. Right, that's gonna be the next. That was what was in the tweet. That was it. Yeah, these these are just ideas of potential the main event matches. Well, with that being said, uh, what happened to the greatest wrestling match ever? Wasn't that supposed to be the uh, uh, end to the uh, you know saga between Orton and uh, Edge? Or what? What are we doing here? Like hey, it's never, uh, hey, you know what? Like the Undertaker has been saying, never say never in WWE. Eric, I want to cut you off because I want to get something in here that you know when i first thought of this i i had the interesting thought process because rkj had been presenting the uh these these tweets immediately when they happened to me i am getting on this podcast and i'm blowing out the mic because i'm saying fuck this no this is bullshit all this stuff but you know what it's not two years ago and since Two years ago, since two year go- years ago's WrestleMania, when we were there, right. things have changed. AEW is now over a year old. The wrestling business as a whole is, you know, at its peak, impact is kind of back. Um, AEW is getting ratings around a million. Um, and here's the thing. With COVID and all that's going on, WrestleMania isn't as special as it normally would be. You know, we're seeing, uh, you know, full gear, getting attendance of 1,000, 2,000 people. That's essentially all anybody can do here. If if, if Vince McMahon wants to sell out, like, Raymond James Stadium or whatever they want to do, sell it out with 20,000 people, that's fine. I watched Errol Spence and Danny Garcia, and you couldn't hear shit. 20,000 screens? 20,000 screens? (laughs) No, exactly. So it, it, it... WrestleMania doesn't mean as much when there's not 90,000 people. in it. It's just another pay-per-view. And you can stack it up as much as you want. But if the fans recognize that this is just another pay-per-view, that's kind of how I'm starting to see it now. I couldn't tell you guys what happened to SummerSlam this year. Because I didn't watch. Because there's no crowd. And it's the same old shit you see on Raw and SmackDown. So I urge this to fans. If you want to see this happen at WrestleMania this year, Goldberg spears Roman Reigns to start the match. Roman Reigns gets up, maybe gets speared again. Goldberg goes for a pin, maybe goes for a jackhammer. 
uh, Superman punch, Roman Reigns spear, spears Goldberg again, and then whatever you want to have happen there, maybe use a weapon here and there, match is going to end in under 10 minutes. If you want to see that, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, go ahead and watch that. You know, you know who's not going to watch that? Me. I'm not going to watch that. And I'll just report on it on the podcast after it happens. I don't mind Lesnar and Drew McIntyre and Keith Lee. I, I don't mind if Lesnar's in the match as long as he doesn't win a title. Like, Lesnar's entertaining, okay? And, and so I don't mind that other stuff. Edge versus Randy Orton, to be honest, because of COVID, I didn't even see the greatest wrestling, the, the greatest match of all time. So I wouldn't mind if they're on, selfishly. But Roman Reigns, Goldberg, there's no reason to watch that. Just like there was no reason to watch Goldberg and Braun Strowman, just like there was no reason to watch Goldberg and Undertaker. Goldberg is a has-been, and he's not the type of has-been He's not this type of 50-year-old wrestler that people want to see. He's the type of 50-year-old wrestler that gets pushed down our throats that we don't want to see. So, again, if you're a fan and you want to see Spear, Spear, Superman Punch, Jackhammer, and no psychology at all, go ahead and watch it. But me, WrestleMania is just another pay-per-view of this main event is going on. So, RKJ, I'll toss it to you. You're the one that came up with this news. I don't want to steal your thunder at all with that because I know you're usually the one that gets a little irritated on this show. But, again... This is a reality. Two years ago, we were at WrestleMania. There was 80,000 people. Now, it's just another pay-per-view inside the Thunderdome or whatever they want to do. Look, uh, you guys see me doing this, okay? Yeah. Earlier today, I had, yeah, I had a flu vaccine. I had to go to the doctor for a, a little checkup on something. I'm okay. Everything's good. But I, the, the lady asked me. She was like, hey, Ryan, do you want to get the flu vaccine? And I was like, oh. Sure, why not? And I was okay with it. I was okay with it until she pulled out that big-ass needle, okay? That big-ass needle went into my arm. She's like, just keep moving your arm. If you keep moving, just relax, just relax. If you move your arm, everything's going to be okay throughout the day. Well, I'm still moving my arm. It's still feeling a little tight. So I'm like, what, what's going on here? And, and I'm bringing this up for this reason, okay? If you're telling me Ticketmaster is going to require you to take a COVID vaccine that you're unsure of, or a freaking COVID test, or let us know a negative test, and we all know how fluky that can be. And you're telling us that we're going to have to do that in order to get Roman Reigns versus Goldberg. You can take that fucking vaccine, you can take that test, and shove it up your ass, okay? The fact <laughs> of the matter is this. The fact of the matter is this. I would be on another level of a jackass if I were to do that just to go see Roman Reigns versus Goldberg. And let's talk about these other matches, true. Two, okay, Drew McIntyre, Brock Lesnar, and Keith Lee. Well, what have you done with Keith Lee? Not very much. And to be quite frank with you, these are rematches within a bigger triple threat match. Keith Lee versus uh, Drew McIntyre happened months ago. And then we also see uh, Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania last year. So what are we doing here? And then we have Edge versus Randy Orton with an interesting twist. We all know what that twist is. It's probably going to be Alexa Bliss and The Fiend somehow, some way, getting involved in this. And we can see this a mile away, too. So it doesn't make any sense. I keep saying this. I've said this on my Twitter. I've said this on the podcast. It is The Rock or nothing for WrestleMania 37. Okay, so if you have a situation where The Rock says, hey, look, I can't make it till June and July. That's simple. Move it. I think you move it to June and July. Why do you move it to June and July? You give more people an actual, actual time to get a vaccine if they want to get the vaccine or get a negative COVID test. It fits with the schedule. It's summer. It's a good time when people are going to want to go out. They're saying that possibly this thing could be over by the summer, maybe, which is great. And you have a big time main event to bring fans back into the WWE. I, if I'm Vince man right now, I am moving heaven and earth to get the rock there. I don't know what's going on. My dad thinks that somewhere, somehow there's a money issue involved because cheap, Vince is a cheap, you know, he's a cheap bastard. But the fact of the matter remains is this. The fact of the matter remains is this. If Vince McMahon is going to get a high-quality match for WrestleMania, it has to be The Rock. This does not make sense having Goldberg there. It doesn't even make sense from continuity standpoint. You have Roman Reigns and Jay Uso talking about family and doing all this argument, talking about the head of the table, and then you have Goldberg come in. It doesn't make sense. In <laughs> no sense in, in, in just the whole storyline for what's going on. And then you try to, and then Nick, I asked you a question yesterday, so I'm going to ask you this again. You brought up to me Big E. How in the hell is Big E credible enough to face Roman Reigns? Because in a couple months, 
even if he wins the Royal Rumble, let's take out the Royal Rumble. What can he do right now to get him to be credible enough to face Roman Reigns at a WrestleMania if they don't go with the Goldberg match? Well, you know what? It's hard. One of the reasons I didn't answer you, because it's a hard question to answer. (laughs) Uh, Because here's the thing. I think just like Roman Reigns the last few years, Big E should be a heel, right? Like, he should be winning a title as a heel. You know, we're going to talk about Kenny Omega winning a title and then turning heel. That's a whole other thing. Um, Maybe you could have that happen technically, maybe a little double turn, whatever. But that's, again, that's just here and there. That's just us spitballing and talking shit, right? Big E has the side. Right, he has the backing, he has the popularity of the new day. I think that you could build him up enough to where he's a credible opponent. Doesn't necessarily mean that he should win. I think realistically, Roman Reigns should win every single match he's in at WrestleMania. No matter like if he's facing Goldberg, he should win. If he's facing The Rock, he should win. If he's facing Daniel Bryan, he should win. And if he's facing Big E, he should win. So it's not really about building up Big E to be credible enough to beat Roman Reigns. It's more of just building him, uh, uh, building him up to be credible enough for his first WrestleMania main event, a la Kofi Kingston, one of his New Day members. When when the year started, Ryan, at this point in the year, at uh, two years ago, Kofi Kingston was not a main event star. What did they do? They were able to build him up before the Royal Rumble, actually realistically just from the Elimination Chamber all the way to WrestleMania. So it's absolutely possible that you can build Big E up enough. It would just be different because I think Roman Reigns needs to keep the title no matter what at WrestleMania, unless you tell a good enough story that makes sense. But So that's how you do it. I I go back to Kofi Kingston. They build up Kofi Kingston, whether it was a mistake or not, uh, or whether it was planned or not, in two months. You start right now with Big E in December, you have more than two months before WrestleMania. You have four months, five months. So they have plenty of time to build them up. Um, and, and so at least that that's how I would say. I compare it to Kofi. You do Kofi in two months, Big E already technically has more rap under him, new, new ring uh, gear, not, not new ring music, stuff like that. You can see they're starting to build them up a little bit and just push them to the moon now. Hey, so here's the thing with Big E. Okay, tell me the difference between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. Tell me the difference between those guys. Those so are- the, the, yeah, the di- I mean, the difference is Daniel Bryan is a different style of wrestler. He's not a power wrestler. He's a technically, technical wrestler. He's a submission artist. Um, and he's absolutely babyface, um, you know, babyface guy, right? It, it, he, he is the, the epitome of babyface. And it's also David Griff versus Goliath. So if da- Daniel Bryan were to win, then you have him beating this 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 monster in Roman Reigns, this monster heel that's been dominating the WWE. With Big E, he at least he has the size, he has the strength to match up with Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I mean, I the, the really I just see the size difference and, and the fact that their styles are different between Big E and Daniel Bryan, so it poses different styles of matches. But what are you getting at here with Big E and Daniel Bryan? I, I'm sorry, but it, what I'm saying is. Roman Reigns and and Daniel Bryan as heels two years ago are completely different characters, completely different. Daniel Bryan, he had to have backup in, in, what was it, Eric Rowan, in order to make himself kind of even more credible as a heel. And you could still see Kofi Kingston finding a way to beat him. Roman Reigns, to be quite frank with you, doesn't need Jey Uso. He's just carrying him around because he wants to keep the family legacy going. He can whoop anybody's ass by himself. So in in my opinion, that's two different scenarios. Those are two different heel comparisons to me. One is Roman Reigns, who's the top guy who who doesn't need anybody, who just carries somebody just because. And another one is Daniel Bryan, who does kind of need somebody. You know, he needs somebody to help him and kind of, you know, push him to that status of being a main event heel. Um, but to be quite frank with you, all of these options besides The Rock just aren't credible enough. And the reason why is because Roman has proven that he's above all of these options. Yeah. Let's get, you know, Daniel Bryan. Like, Jay Uso's been whooping Daniel Bryan's ass like the past couple of weeks. Numerous times over the past couple of months on SmackDown, he's constantly beat him up. So Roman Reigns is just destroying Jay Uso verbally and kind of physically. He's been destroying him physically, so now Jay Uso is beating up Daniel Bryan. So why would I think Daniel Bryan is a credible babyface to yeah. Roman Reigns? Because the person that Roman Reigns is dominating is destroying Daniel Bryan. 
And then let's look at Big E. Okay, Big E maybe, but the problem with Big E is you got to get the ball moving a little faster. They did, they waited, yeah. and he was in some pointless storylines I just didn't get, and, and they waited too long to do the draft. If you wanted to have him go face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, you need to have the draft earlier so you can build him up more. It's a little bit too late now. And then, you know, what is it? Drew McIntyre? Well, that's a great option. That's one thing that I've heard, and I would be down yeah. for that. The problem is he kind of looked like an idiot last month when Jay Uso interfered. Roman Reigns also said, you will forever be my favorite number two. So Roman Reigns in that process kind of buried him. So that option's off the table. You know, like, I don't really know what else you have here besides The Rock. And you're continuously in this storyline of being the head of the table, bringing yeah. in family. So if you're going to do this, the real head of the table eventually needs to show up and say, I'm actually the head of the table. And that man could be The Rock. He has an opportunity. It's not like Hollywood's busting with movies right now with everybody being stuck at home. Uh-huh. You have an opportunity to do this thing if you need to. He does have some time in his schedule, I believe, from that time on. If he doesn't have the time, then move heaven and earth, Vince. Get whatever you got to do. Put whatever. Back up all the money possible to his house and say, here, you want more money? I'll bring more money to your house, Rock. But I just need this matchup. It has to happen. You want to talk about something that's going to get everybody and their mom watching. It, I, I, and with all due respect to the people here, Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns, it's a nice match for WWE fans. Does not get the casual audience. Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns, nice match for casual fans. Or excuse me, nice match for WWE fans and wrestling fans. Doesn't get the casuals. The Rock versus Roman Reigns is the biggest match you can put on. It's the match you need to put on. And if you're going to require us to have a COVID vaccine, if you're going to require us for a negative COVID test, if you're going to require me to have my arm hurting like this all the time because of me having to take a vaccine, God knows what else could happen from this vaccine. We don't know. We got to do research on it. If you're going to require all that, then I'll take it if it's The Rock versus Roman Reigns. I ain't taking it for Goldberg and Roman Reigns. <laughs> Bullshit. Hey, the, well, one thing you're going to get from this show, guys, is RKJ Man making a whole lot of sense about pro wrestling most of the time. Uh, right. This, I think you're spot on, man. I mean, like, because what they've done is they've pigeonholed themselves into this storyline with Roman Reigns. If they were simply, if they were not doing the head of the table storyline, you would not need The Rock. Because the only head of the table that possibly could be above Roman Reigns is the rock that would be credible that's a wrestler like we don't give a shit if it's you know like if it's the other family members because they're all old and they're not credible so it's like yeah it really is the rock and again you're kind of right in this in this time where we're seeing sting return to AEW and return to wrestling and in this time where we're seeing Shaq go over to AEW and, and all this stuff and you see AEW and impact switching companies or, or having their champion on another show and you have all this interesting great storytelling and you have cm punk coming out of there here now and saying that he would come back for an interesting storyline there's nothing more not interesting than goldberg and roman reigns eric i'll give you the last thought on this you heard what rkj said you heard what i said what are your thoughts on two things the rock for is there the rock possibility and if not do you think the other guys are credible speaking of biggie daniel bryan or potentially drew mcintyre I mean, I do like the idea with Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns because how we looked at Roman Reigns before, before he turned heel, we looked at him as like this artificial WWE built like pampered guy Mm -hmm. up against a guy like Daniel Bryan who comes from the independence, who gains a cult following, who is supposed to be in Stephanie McMahon and Triple H's words, B plus player a couple years ago. And, you know, obviously the Roman versus, you know, uh, Goliath and uh, even Goliath kind of uh, thing match. I like the idea. But uh, as like you said, he's been getting his he's been getting his ass whooped by what uh, Jay Uso. Right. So, I mean, that that doesn't go so well. Uh, yeah, I do. I can see a match between Rock and uh, and freaking um, Roman Reigns. But I can probably see McMahon's vision by saying. Haha, ha, Ryan, great match. I like the match, but it's only a dream match. It's just dream. It's not gonna happen. Then we need a guy. I know that's the thing. I know that's the thing. Like, yeah, you, exactly. You don't yeah. build on the Samoan heritage anymore. Yeah, get, yeah, I know. Like, like, yeah, we think we can give these ideas. It's like, yeah, that's a great match. But guess what? It's dream, guys. It's dream. We need a guy who's full time. 
So we need Big E. So Noe McMahon, he can probably go with a guy who is full time right now, not part time. If I get if I get what I'm saying, even yeah. though yeah, we might like the ideas, we might throw all these great scenarios. McMahon needs a guy who's there full time and is ready. He can't be a guy who's like overseas or maybe like somewhere across the state, you know, across the states at all. So I can see McMahon pointing his fingers on either Big E or Daniel Bryan. That's just how it is, you know, just by seeing how the stubborn mind is, which if they're going with that route, um, you know, I don't mind it as long as it's. I, I guess maybe at this point we're like okay any anything anybody but Goldberg at this point a uh, hundred fucking percent. I think maybe I mean, at this point it's like anything it, but it, that that and Brock Lesnar because we've seen the Brock Lesnar thing so many times yeah, if they had never fought I'm okay with that I guess but like I do not care about Goldberg and Brock and unless you do something interesting with Brock with someone new that we haven't seen I really don't need to see Brock in WWE anymore. Uh, I would literally, there are literally more storylines you could do with UFC with Brock than than WWE at this point. So I do not need to see Brock and he's not going to make me go watch WrestleMania. And Goldberg makes me want to turn the fucking TV off. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it just, I have to agree with you. I, I mean, I don't know who, what the credible thing is. They pigeonhole themselves. Again, if you can get interesting storytelling and you can build up DB and Big E uh, enough to be there at WrestleMania, I'm fine with that. I, I'm okay because that helps the business. Like propping up Big E, building him up as a star, there's nothing wrong with that. Giving Daniel Bryan his last signal, long singles run and giving him a WrestleMania main yeah. event that he really never, like he's only had one other time right. and it was a well, long time ago. This, it it yeah. works. Like it, that's fine. But, but we don't need to see John Cena or Goldberg or The Undertaker. Or, like <laughs> it, again, I, I do want The Rock. Yeah. But it's not realistic. Like, it's not realistic that they can get Rock right now because it's coronavirus. Any other time, 100%, we're talking about Rock, and we're probably seeing plus, stuff get thrown yeah. out there right now with the Rock. Well, yeah, plus you know? this but, is, this is some, yeah, plus this is something that we kind of voiced before where we said Biggie needs to get out of the New Day. This is course. something that fans have been voicing. I, I If I, we can go back, maybe about a year ago, we were talking about, we were putting out these scenarios saying that, oh, Biggie might break out of the new day and this is my biggest chance of you know being a breakout star this is like last year now this is his chance i guess you can say like now this is our ch this is uh, his chance and our comments are kind of getting back into full circle and which to this point this is going to be biggie's break since those are the kind of comments and the things that yeah. the fans were giving to biggie you know but I, but again I, I think Big E needs to be a heel. Like, I think if yeah. he's going to have his big run, it needs to be heel. Realistically, the two biggest heels in wrestling right now should be Roman Reigns and Big E. That, that's what I think. It, you can still big, build up Big E and have him be it next year. I'm okay with that. But again, having the match at WrestleMania, having his big match at WrestleMania, I think needs to be when he's a heel. And maybe it's against Kofi or Xavier Woods, and you've built up a storyline that, that involves their family. Right. You have their head at the table or whatever you want to do. But so, yeah, I, but again, I just want to stress that we hear these reports and unfortunately the fucking report doesn't say that Big E and Daniel Bryan are involved, which just sucks because it's Goldberg and, and, and RKJ. I, I, we can't talk about this anymore because we have to move on topics. But what this makes me feel like, I just want to get your quick comments on this, is that Rock can't do WrestleMania. So they're like, well, we don't have anything to do with Roman. So let's just throw in Goldberg and pay him a bunch of money. Like, like, it seems like they have cash allotted for Brock and Rock saying, I can't do it till June. And Vince is like, well, we're on a schedule and, all, and is a robot or whatever and says, well, then we'll give half of it to Goldberg. It's just, it's stupid. It's stupid for multiple reasons. Move damn WrestleMania to June, July when people want to go out. Let them take the COVID. I'm taking the COVID vaccine if I'm getting the Rock versus Roman Reigns. I'm going to take it. I'm going to risk my arm hurting for a day or two, maybe a week or whatnot for that to, to watch that match. Hey, I'll go with you. I'll go with you. I'm not taking it to watch Goldberg versus Roman Reigns or these other crappy rematches that they're trying to make me pay a, a crap ton of money for. And, yeah. and, and, what I, and what I've said again really quickly is this. What is your plan going to WrestleMania? What was your plan? And I said this months ago. What was the main plan? Well, well, I want Roman Reigns to go to WrestleMania. Okay, fantastic. You want him to go to WrestleMania with the title as a heel? Awesome. Who's going to face him? 
And now they're in this position, and it's all their fault. They couldn't build up somebody credible in the time being. They had Roman Reigns destroy everybody, and now somebody's got to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and the only person that makes sense, they can't get. I'll say this. I hope, I say this properly because I don't want anybody to get mad. <laughs> I hope that if they plan Goldberg and Roman Reigns, that a few days before WrestleMania, Goldberg contact traces somebody with COVID. Doesn't get COVID, but oh, is geez. unable to show up at WrestleMania. And Damn. you have to have a different... That's what I hope happens. I hope well, he chooses not to take the hope. vaccine. I hope he doesn't get tested. And I hope Goldberg fucks himself out of this match. That's what, that's what I hope. Damn. I just want to say this. When the last major event before freaking before COVID hit was Saudi Arabia. So you, one can argue that Goldberg winning that title plunged us into COVID. Thank you, Goldberg, for plunging us <laughs> into COVID, for winning the championship. <laughs> there was two things that plunged us into COVID. It was Goldberg winning that championship, and it was Deontay Wilder blaming his fucking suit on losing that boxing match. Those were the two things. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some fun stuff, guys. We got 30 minutes left in this podcast. Of course, I knew when we got into the Roman Reigns shit, we were getting talked way too long, but whatever. I want The Rock. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, we want The Rock. Let, let's, I'm going to tweet The Rock right now and be like, hey, man, like we're podcasters. We think we booked WWE better. Can you just like get in this? Like, um, but speaking of good booking, I don't think any of us could have booked the last few AEW shows better. Um, than they've been booked. And that, I don't think we could have booked the last the last Impact Wrestling show better right. than uh, we, 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 like, so obviously if you're a wrestling fan and you're listening to our podcast, you know what's been going on in the world of wrestling. You don't know what's going on in SmackDown and Raw, because I don't. And you do know that Kenny Omega won the AEW World Championship against Don, Don Moxley. He cheated. Him and Don Callis left the ring. They then showed up on Impact Wrestling on Tuesday. Yes, Impact Wrestling on Tuesday in the main event of Impact Wrestling, talk shit on everybody, call John Moxley, Dean Ambrose in the process, and then show up on Wednesday, and Kenny Omega's full heel, and I love it. We also had a plethora of other things, like, you know, Sting show up. I didn't expect that. Didn't we expect predicted that. everything that was going to happen in that Cody Rhodes match. I said, it's going to be Taz, it's going to be Shaq. Nope. It's good. Stick. <laughs> right? You got to you gotta love wrestling when it's a pleasant surprise. It's not Goldberg coming back. It's a pleasant old guy that was screwed by WWE realistically and told he couldn't wrestle again, similar to Daniel Bryan, who we just talked about as well. You also have now this, this AEW Dynamite combined with Kenny Omega going full heel, combined with Don Callis being there. They're landing in a helicopter. You have Sting return. He speaks to Tony Schiavone. He speaks to Cody Rhodes. You have the inner circle get back together. You have MJF win the diamond ring for the second year in a row. None of us predicted that. And you also have Brandy Rhodes throwing water in Shaq's face. And what was Shaq really performing well in a segment when we've seen him in WWE kind of act a little non kayfabe and a little fakey? Did a great job. So we're going to start with the Kenny Omega stuff and the impact the AEW stuff because. We had to talk about that first, but we will quickly go over all those other things, and each one of us will give our, our opinion about one of those things. But RKJ, we got cross-brand promotion like we haven't seen since, like, I don't know, ECW and, and, and WWE back in 2005, realistically, like, or 2006. What, is your been, what have been your thoughts on not only Omega winning the title, but, like, everything? It's almost like we forgot he won the title, and that match was so great. Because of what's happened. What are your thoughts on everything? I think it's been fantastic. I think it's been amazing. I think this has been a breath of fresh air for what we needed for wrestling for a while. Um, Nick, I remember us going to All Out last year and getting to talk to someone very prominent at the time before they left to go to another promotion, talking to us about Impact Wrestling and all the things that they were doing. And, and, and we really came away with like a sour taste in our mouth for, and from Impact Wrestling. And I, I know I said, I don't want to talk about them on this podcast again unless they do something relevant. Well, they did something damn relevant. And it looks like they've, they've changed. It looks like this COVID thing and then AEW coming into play and being a main, main thing in the wrestling industry has really made things kind of like change for Impact Wrestling. And this is huge. And think about the gates that this is open now. 
we're going to see cross promotion. We talk a lot about earlier in the year before the pandemic hit, TNT gave AEW room for a second show on TNT, and that will be coming eventually. This is Tony's Khan's, Tony Khan's perfect avenue. Hey, Impact Wrestling, let's open up a partnership with each other. Let's do stuff on this secondary show on TNT. This will be huge. This will be a, a huge avenue and a huge opportunity for you to expand your brand. And Let's look at the bump it gave Impact Wrestling. Like, it had the highest oh, amount of views oh. it's had in years. Like, people right. before the other day couldn't even find Impact Wrestling. They didn't know where it was. They had to, uh, Impact had to do on their Twitter how you can find Impact Wrestling on Twitch or on Access TV. So, like, nobody knew where Impact Wrestling was before that day. And they were searching the channel and everything was going crazy with that. So, I think this is a huge opportunity for AEW and, and Impact Wrestling. This is something big. And as we get closer and closer, hopefully the fans coming back. I, I'm looking forward to what can happen. And and I, I'm really, really excited about Sting, too. And I like the fact, Eric, that he looked up to Darby Allen. That's right. That's right. All I want to say is thank you, Kenny Omega and Don Callis, for changing the course of wrestling history last week because now that's going to open possible doors to not just impact wrestling but for other organizations as well because i don't know making the wrestling community great again and making the uh community healthy that can also like kenny omega says he said that hey i don't mind getting any uh any other titles you know like the impact wrestling title I don't mind getting himself the uh, New Japan title. Maybe in my mind, I would I don't I wouldn't mind him going after the Ring of Honor title. Or I can say is this: he can go after the most prestigious title that is not the WWE. You can probably say the oldest title since the 1940s, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, and have that. Maybe in the future for next year, Kenny Omega with the AEW title versus Nick Aldis for the NWA championship some way, do some sort of a show. I don't know, maybe in like another second coming of All In. I'm just throwing in some ideas out there, but since so Kenny Omega likes, he likes to collect championships, attack. If, I want, if, if I was Kenny Omega, I'd collect championships and go after the biggest title. The NWA Jim Cornette just had a heart attack just now. I just want to let everybody know Jim Cornette just had a heart attack right now at the thought of Kenny Omega winning the NWA World Championship. And I, I will say this. I will say this. Jim Cornette had a heart attack, and uh, my prayers are with him. Oh. Uh, but but so oh, man, while Ken is shoving that NWA championship in his face, you know, <laughs> and, and the young bucks that are holding their, their tag team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I win these last night because there was shit in my broccoli. Um, that's a whole, you guys don't even understand. Only Eric actually understands that one. Um, so, uh, getting back to this. So I, I, Eric, I was listening to what you were saying. I just was reading a tweet from Kenny Omega that I wanted to, uh, to explain to you guys. So again, we go from cheering for Kenny Omega to win this title over John Moxley, who I also like, who has a child on the, on the way. Congratulations, a baby girl, right? Um, Renee has... CM Punk on her podcast, right? Everything's going well for the Moxley family. Omega comes in this title match. We all predict him. We all think it's the right thing to do for him to win. He wins. He says he's going to Impact Wrestling. And he turns full heel. And now he says that this was planned from when he came into AEW, when they created AEW. Like, how could you not love this? This is, this is where I get made fun of by my girlfriend. Because I get mad at Kenny Omega when he's on TV. Because I think it's real. And then I have to remember, oh, yeah, this is wrestling. Because I actually get mad at the guy for screwing over everybody. <laughs> like, like, this is how good this is. He tweets 19 hours ago. I assume this was during the show. After tonight, there's something really bothering me. A question I wish I knew the answer to. Why do all of your favorites completely fail to move the needle? I feel bad for you guys. That's what Kenny Omega tweeted. Would you have imagined him saying that, I don't know, eight days ago? nine days ago no this is the way you do it guys like this is fucking perfect okay let alone the impact wrestling element where kenny omega is essentially saying he's going to do whatever he wants 
like you say, Eric, maybe he'll go after the NWA title. That's not out of the possibility because the NWA women's champions are, are more popular than the fucking AEW win. Now, I think that's going to change because I love Abaddon, and that's something I wish we could talk about in this podcast. Maybe we just have too much to talk about. But this opens doors for everything possible. And in the time where we have Goldberg potentially main eventing WrestleMania, on these other shows, RKJ, you said we have a breath of fresh air. Oh, Omega's coming to talk with John Callis. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. Oh, Sting's back? We didn't even know Sting still existed in pro wrestling. Um, the inner circle might break up. I got to see this. That was a really entertaining segment. Shaq's going to be on the show. All right, might as well see what they're going to talk about, right? Um, and then also throw in a Lucha Brothers versus um, Butcher and Blade match and, and just throw that in there in the middle of the show. Like, that's nothing. That would be an event like WWE every single fucking week. But this is just, you know, and then you have Orange Cassidy and MJ. It's just, yeah, they're so, doing things. Yeah. Yeah, so Go it ahead. just makes, it kind of makes you forget of the whole Goldberg and Roman Reigns thing, right? Like, has it yeah, made you guys forget about what's happening over in WWE? Which, for me, personally, it's like, I put it, like, down below, and I put what Kenny Omega and Don Callis and the rest of the guys at AEW are doing up here. It's like, I'm putting whatever WrestleMania they got planned. Okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, do whatever you want. You know, like, but I'm, I, I know what I'm watching yeah. now. <laughs> I what do. He, Eric, the, what Eric doesn't know, real quick, what Eric doesn't know is that he put the bar so low that we couldn't even see it on screen when he did. That. That's how low that would be. It makes me feel. Yeah. Dude, I mean, look, with this, this whole situation though, it does make me frustrated with WWE because people look at the WWE as the wrestling industry. So if the WWE is doing well, AEW is going to be noticed too. And if the WWE is sucking, people aren't going to watch AEW. So it's going to hurt AEW either way. It's it's frustrating with this, but I'm telling you, it's huge. Now, m- my thoughts on the Sting situation, because I, I, need to, I need to talk to you guys about the Sting situation. Yeah. I'll be quite frank with you. Before I try to be a little bit more positive, at first I said I really don't like this idea. And the reason why is it sounds too much de- like WWE, because I know this guy is going to wrestle. He's a 61-year-old man who's had a plethora of injuries in his history, you know, you know, trying to come back. It, it just doesn't look right. It's too much WWE, but then I thought about it. There's ways you can do this, and and, and it looks like before Cody gets his hands on Sting, we're going to get Darby in Sting, and hopefully Darby even turns heel for this. And, and I think this is going to cement Darby Allen as that next dark character, kind of like Sting, kind of the character that just crosses everything. He's in a way, kind of maybe like their Bray Wyatt or the Fiend character in AEW. And I think that will be a big thing for uh, Sting and for Darby Allin too as well. And then talking about Shaq, I mean, this makes sense to do what they're doing with Shaq. I mean, in a couple of weeks, the NBA is coming back on. So why not put Cody Rhodes and Brandy Rhodes on freaking the inside of the NBA right after opening night? They're going to do the previous night. They're going to do something there. So why not put them on inside the NBA? This is a perfect situation for all this. They're just making sense. Yeah, no, I mean, everything, like, literally, this is how good they're doing it, is not only is AEW crossing over to Impact, not only is AEW crossing over to NWA, arguably the two biggest wrestling companies in the world right now besides WWE, right? You then have, they just promoted at the end of that show, you guys probably didn't even catch it, that not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday, AEW comes on whenever the NBA ends, which means there's no inside the NBA, which means Shaq could easily be on Dynamite. That like <laughs> They film in Atlanta, Georgia. That's not too far away from Jacksonville. Shaq could literally film the halftime report of the last game of that night. I think it's Rockets Nuggets. No, it's and get over, to A- get over to AEW in time. Rockets and Bucks, yeah. Um, get over to AEW and do something. They are crossing over into the National Basketball Association, guys. You're saying that the gold standard right now, that the measuring stick is WWE. I think the way they're doing this, because they're doing it right, the measuring stick is going to slowly go into AEW if they keep up what they're doing. It's long-term booking. It's everything we say for WWE to do. And I'm so happy that we have a company and we have something to watch every single week that's like this. I do want to mention something before we get into the other real quick topics, because I'll just let you have your sting talk, uh, your your sting opinion, and then we'll move on to the other stuff. Um, NXT War Games, again, NXT still doing it right. We're not going to talk about that in the podcast. 
I urge you guys to go watch that. I heard Pat McAfee's doing great things over there. I heard the women are doing great things. I heard there's not a lot wrong with that show. And unfortunately, Vince is forcing them to fucking compete with AEW. And I don't think that's the way they should be doing it. But I want to give a shout out real quick. NXT is doing it right still. Unfortunately, we don't end up talking about them because they compete directly with AEW. And this shit's just better. And it, it, so they need to think about that too and have NXT like maybe switch to Thursday or Tuesday or something like that. Like they need to really, they're going to, that's not even close. Like we're not even starting to talk about AEW versus NXT anymore. We're starting to talk about AEW versus WWE. Like this is something that we all, RKJ, I remember us having like a 40 minute conversation about this and now it's actually happening. But so you mentioned that Sting not coming back or, or coming back could be a good thing. Now, Eric, I want to pose this to you really quickly. What are your thoughts on Sting coming back. We, we talk shit on Goldberg, who's in his 50s. We talk shit on everybody else. <laughs> you know, AEW uses a, f- a few 50-year-olds, Gold, uh, Gold Dust and, and Dustin Rhodes, or, uh, excuse me, Dustin Rhodes and Chris Jericho. Now Sting, who's 61. Why is it for you different with AEW than it is for WWE? Well, just by looking at Sting, yeah, that is true. He has been going through a number of multiple injuries. He was one of the guys who was still active after WCW, going on to TNA, and then coming to WWE, and then having his injury up against Seth Rollins, which just scrapped ideas for Sting, potential rivalries for WWE. I think Sting leaving WWE left a sour taste in his mouth, and going to AEW, seeing a whole breadth of new faces. It's kind of like when he came into TNA, a whole new breadth of faces. So for him, obviously he'd want to test his, himself against like the guys, like the new guys like Darby Allen, Cody Rhodes, potentially Chris Jericho. Um, but I did, I did hear a report. I think it might have been Wrestling News or PWI Insider that he, in the in his contract apparently he's not going to take big bumps. Yeah, in, yeah. If he's going to be wrestling again, if if anything, I can see him more maybe in the future as a role as like, not like a manager, but more like a mentor to someone kind of like what Jake, the snake Roberts is doing, Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, Vicky Guerrero, all these veterans. I think Sting might be doing that in the same thing as well. But since his presence uh, last week was shocking and how he looks pretty, he looks pretty good as far as physique goes. So I can still yeah. see like, okay, maybe Sting, he can still go. This might be his last run. Hopefully, it might be his his last time wrestling. And if there's one, you know, here's the thing. I don't and, and I don't want to be like one of those guys who's kind of like you know putting it out there. But you know, since we never had that Taker and Sting match, and since and since Undertaker is retired, and Undertaker is like done, how about not have like why don't you guys have like a match between those two guys somewhere else that is not WWE? Just have it somewhere. Just get out of the way. You know, it can be like a cinematic match. That doesn't have to be WWE controlled. Just have your just have your match, and I think we should be fine. You know, because when you when you put in WWE, there's too many restrictions. But if they're doing it somewhere else, it seems to me that they can throw in all the ideas that they can and make it into a good match. But that's just something that I, maybe in the future that might happen. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. Uh, but for staying. Yeah, it looks like, uh, like he said, the only thing for sure about Sting is nothing for sure. So I really don't know what the hell is going to happen. But it seems to be that him and Cody Rhodes are going to cross paths uh, again in the future. But it's it's healthy. It, it, there is hope. Just by well, year of 2020, it kind of leaves me some hope for next year. Yeah, I'll say this too about Sting, and then we'll move on to the other topics. Um, with Sting, he's 61, but remember... His last match, I believe, was in 2015. Yeah. So it's five years of not taking bumps, unlike a Goldberg, unlike Rest- Undertaker, all this stuff. Like, Sting's doing nothing. He's been doing nothing. And so maybe that, you know, maybe they, they told him six months ago, hey, start getting into wrestling shape, you're coming back, all that stuff. And he started in discussions. But Sting is not a true 61-year-old in the sense of pro wrestling. He's still in. He's still fifty, fifty something year old, right? So, I'll say this: He looks good. He fucking sounds good, oh, yeah. right? He sounds sure is like he knows what he's talking about. He sounds like he's excited, and everybody seems excited. So I like that. Now the other things on the show, guys. Inner Circle coming back. Um, 
uh, Eric, I'll give you this one real quick. What do you think about the inner circle staying together? Did you expect them to, to break up or do you like that they're staying together? Uh, I expected them to stay together, but it's a temporary thing just by seeing the egos between MJF and Sammy Guevara, Warlow and uh, Jake Hager. Uh, I, I expect another, you know, scuffle between those two. Yeah. Uh, I expect Sammy Guevara and MJF just blow up just because how selfish and egotistical MJF is on on Dynamite. So I can see that breakup. Not not right now, but like maybe in a couple months. But and yeah, I expect that so to get back together. Our, our today, speaking of MJF, we we predicted the diamond ring. We all thought that somebody would screw him over. We all thought Sammy Guevara would screw him over, reward low, all this stuff. Other people might win this match. MJF wins the ring again. And so thoughts on that. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Um, I, I, ne I didn't necessarily like it because it's, it's not leading to anything right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't see what the importance of the diamond ring he won the last time was because he, he it didn't lead to him winning a championship over Moxley or anybody, you know, so it doesn't make any sense. What are they going to do with this? Maybe it's going to lead to him breaking up the inner circle or maybe becoming the leader of inner, the inner circle, you know, taking over. By betraying Chris Jericho with that diamond ring, but I, I didn't like it. I thought you could have given it to someone else, but I mean, I could see from days, from miles away, that inner circle is going to be broken up because of NJF, or probably, most likely, what's going to happen is Chris Jericho is going to get betrayed by the inner circle, and specifically MJF, and MJF is going to take over the group. There you go. Um, yeah, so AEW doing great things. I'll comment about Shaq. Um, I said this earlier. I thought what they're doing with this and they're not doing the predictable thing of having Shaq like attack Cody and obviously you have Sting and you have these other things that are involved you still have Taz Brian Cage all these guys right and so you don't need Sting to or, or you don't need um Shaq to be involved what I like though Shaq sits down with Brandy Rhodes and Tony Schiavone Brandy Rhodes is already pissed off at him He's saying, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I was kind of just talking shit like I usually do. He makes a little offhanded comment to Brandy, probably in the same joking Shaq way. And Brandy throws out a plethora of cuss words in a row, which I didn't think you could do on, on TNT. TNT. And, yeah, and, and then Shaq gets the water thrown in his face. And so we're now we're gonna have like so we're gonna have Shaq at ringside or or whenever that that match happens between the chick that he I, what's the chick's name that he's with I'm forgetting her name is Jade Car Jade okay but, but we'll just say Jade so Jade versus Brandy Rhodes whenever that happens Shaq's gonna be at ringside I'm okay with that right you bump up the women's division by having Shaq that's the best way to do it right like again <laughs> AEW. not only do they not become predictable they go how do we how do we improve the women's division. We're gonna have this monster come in and defeat our our current champion right now, and 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 take a blow from a kendo stick and and sit up in four seconds, and then in the in in the in the mid card of the women's division, we're gonna have Brandy Rhodes versus some chick we've never heard of, and Shaq's gonna be there involved. I'm good with it, and I like that Shaq's acting professional and taking this seriously, and I hope they take it seriously with the NBA too, and and the inside the NBA and whatever they do with that is not a sham and doesn't look too kayfabe or fake. So I'm excited. All right, guys, let's get on to UFC. Completely changing gears here. Some MMA talk. Um, UFC 256, it, is, uh, it was originally supposed to be headlined by Aljamain Sterling and uh, Peter Yan. Uh, it was supposed to be a Bantamweight title fight. Big fight there. That has been moved uh, for various reasons. And now the main event is Davison Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno. And we discussed on the podcast two weeks ago these two guys. They both won on the same night. They both won in the first round on the same night, and they're both staying in Las Vegas until this 256 card. They are main eventing. Davidson Figueroa is the flyweight champion, and he's also the savior of the flyweight division because that division was going away, and now we have an actual fight that's main eventing this UFC 256 card that I'm excited about. You also have Tony Ferguson returning to the ring versus Charles Oliveira, who I believe is on an eight or nine uh, match winning streak. Mackenzie Dern, one of the most popular female fighters, one of the most dominant female fighters. She's on this card as well, facing Verna uh, Jandaroba, uh, a, a, a upcomer. Um, Kevin Holland, 
who is who has the most fights in the UFC in 2020. Think about that in 2020, a year where we we've been stuck in our homes most of the year. He has the most fights in 2020. It's another one here versus a UFC veteran in Jacare Souza, and you also have Junior dos Santos on this card as well. This is a good card, guys. Uh, although we don't have like the top tier main event that we'd want, this is a good fight card. Um, RKD, I'll talk to you first. You actually know a lot about Figueredo and Moreno more than you'd know about a lot of other UFC fighters because you follow this saga. Just give me your take. What do you think, again, is going to happen in this type of fight? And if you want to make a comment about Tony Ferguson, go ahead as well. Um, first of all, I just want to say this. This card is sneaky sexy, meaning, yeah. meaning it's one of those cards that I looked at and I said, eh, it's on the low low, it looks like it might be one of the cards of the year, if not the card of the year. Um, I think this matchup, this main event matchup between Moreno and Figueroa is going to be a, a knock him down fight. You got kind of two different styles. You got one fighter who kind of likes to stand up. You got another fighter who can just put you in, put you in a chokehold and just destroy your ass. So it's going to be a really good fight, and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens there. Uh, my money is on Figueroa, though. I think he's coming on a win streak right now. He's too hot right now with this situation. He wants to prove he's dominant. He wants to continue to put that di uh, division on prominence. And I think just the mat game from him is just crazy, in my opinion. Um, and then Tony Ferguson, who is trying to make a comeback after everybody and their mom saw him embarrass himself uh, not too long ago, um, you know, when we were all stuck in our homes and there was no sports. So Tony Ferguson, I hope your ass is watching right now. I hope your ass does a much better job in this match. And I'm going to pick you to win. But please don't disappoint me because you ain't nowhere near where Conor McGregor and all these other main guys are in this division. Please don't disappoint me. But, I mean, overall, I think the card is sneaky sexy. Hey, uh, Eric, you hear him just I, – I, I got to love our kids. I love when you pick a fight with these legitimate fighters because – I would, first of all, I'd love to see what would happen if, if he ever said this in person to one well, of them. Well, Tony Ferguson, like, you can win the match against him, but you're not going to expect to leave out the same. You're going to have your oh, yeah. ears That's busted. True. You're going to have your eyes probably bust out. You're going to see, like, maybe, like, a whole, like, your head, forehead be just be <sighs> split open. You're going so to look like, gonna gonna look like uh, uh, Judge Jacek. Do you want a Judge Jacek? <laughs> oh, when you yes. come out of the fight. He lost, and it's still not impressive to me. We 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 put this big thing on Tony Ferguson and how good he is. A and, he dude. Beat, he's and the announcers keep saying, "Look at the shots he's taking! Oh my God, it's phenomenal! You can't believe it!" And I'm like, "The dude's getting his ass wet. He's losing. He lost the fight." No, I mean, it, it, what's funny, it, Eric? We can't really defend ourselves because the guy had shit in the bed completely when we when we when we talked him up. Um, and then Gaethje goes and gets killed by Khabib. Yeah. I think that shows more about what, yeah. what, what Khabib. I, I think that's just more of what Khabib is than, than what Ferguson and Gaethje are. But um, you know, this is an interesting. These are interesting fights. I'll just get my take on this, and I'll toss it to you, Eric. Um, as far as what I think is going to happen in this main event, you, you, you know, between Figueroa and actually, I'll talk about Ferguson and Oliveira because we're on that subject right now. Yeah, Tony Ferguson needs a win. And I heard somebody say this, maybe all these strikes he takes and all these wars he's been in are taking a little bit of a toll. And the only reason you would say that is because of what happened against Justin Gaethje and how how dominated he got from a guy that kind of, you know, Gaethje's great, but Gaethje's not like the end all be all of top fighters in the UFC. He's kind of a he's a he's a puncher, he's a boxer and he's a, he's an ass kicker. But Ferguson should have won that fight realistically. He's going against a guy named Charles, uh, or against Charles Oliveira. His last win was on the first card after everything got locked down. It was in Brazil. Um, it was a great card. He dominated his opponent. The one thing about Oliveira that I wanted to mention to you guys and anybody out here listening to this podcast is that Oliveira, in big fights in the past, has shown signs of quit when this going's kind of not going well. So it's actually good. This fight is only three rounds rather than five. I think five rounds Ferguson 100%. Um, I think three rounds gives Oliveira a chance. But nonetheless, this is a great fight. I just want to throw that out there. Ferguson doesn't quit. Oliveira might quit. So th this is where this three-round fight um, is good. And I think you're going to have a submission in this fight. And I think it's it, it, it's it's going to end before the, the third round because I think these guys both realize they need a win. Oliveira, if he wants to have any shot at a championship, needs to win this fight. And if Ferguson wants to continue – in the UFC, realistically, he needs to win this fight as well. So one of those fights you love when you when two guys need this win really bad. And then to the main event, 
guys, Figueroa is a monster. You know, he reminds me of Mighty Mouse. It reminds me of John Jones. It reminds me of Khabib. This guy is going to dominate this division. Maybe one of the only guys that can come back and beat him is Henry Cejudo. You, uh, you're only going to have super fights. It reminds me of Amanda Nunez as well, Valentina Shevchenko, who we saw on the last card. This guy is for real. Brandon Moreno deserves the number one contender spot, deserves this fight. But, man, I am afraid for this dude. And for five rounds, I really hope this either ends early or maybe Moreno can catch him in a submission because I see Figueroa all day in this fight. Uh, it will be a good main event. You'll have a championship one, and we'll see what ends up happening with the flyweight division after this if Figueroa wants to go up to Bantamweight. I know his cuts are really hard. I know, I've heard he looks really good, so this will probably be his best-looking fight, which is very scary for Moreno as well. Um, but, yeah, I have Figueroa in that, and I have Ferguson winning the other fight. To go on the rest of this card before I pass to Eric, Mackenzie Dern, this is her toughest test in a while since she's had her child. So that to look at that as we'll, we'll see who the really who the real Mackenzie Dern is. Kevin Hall, Jacare Souza. You got to think Holland go, goes into this fight as the winner, but Souza, he's a veteran, but still he's there. He wins fights and and, and he's still a great fighter. You have Junior Dos Santos versus Cyril Gain. This is a fucking mismatch because Junior Dos Santos is out of his prime. He says he needs to win to stay in the UFC, much like um, much like uh, Anderson Silva did. Cyril Gain is an up-and-coming knockout artist, and this is another fight I'm afraid of. One other fight I wanted to mention uh, is, or specifically a, a man that I want to mention, is Rafael Fazayas. I want you guys to go look at this last guy's fight. You guys ever seen The Matrix? Who's seen The Matrix here? You guys, ever, like, you've seen, you guys have seen The Matrix. Th- there's that scene where the guy is getting, uh, bullets are getting shot at him, right? And, and he's, 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 he's bending. Flip. Yeah, but he's also bending back, right? Either bending back, they're avoiding right. the, yeah. RKJ legitimately does that to kicks in the UFC. He, when kicks come on his head, he bends back and avoids them. This guy is <laughs> must see. He's the next champion in his division. Wait, you know that's actually Tony Ferguson and Khabib's division, but he's the ne- this guy is the next big thing, and this is must see. It's on the undercard too. It's not even the main event of the undercard. That is a fight I'm excited to see as well. Now, I will toss it to Eric. What are your thoughts on this whole card? Uh, and do you have another fight that you're excited about besides the main event fight? Yeah, you know, it's going to be up there as like uh, UFC's version of SummerSlam. Oh, if if anything, we can call it Winter Slam for uh, UFC, the go-home show uh, for Winter. the year 2020. What's up? Winterfest. Winterfest. So, yeah. After a big, uh, stressful year of 2020, uh, this is the go-home show, and I'm excited for it. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep my eyes peeled on this one. The Yeah, besides the main event, uh, I think the match that I'm more interested in seeing is Tony Ferguson, Charles Oliveira. Just by Tony Ferguson, his uh, match against with Justin Gaethje really just served him saying that, you know what? I really need to get back into my A game because uh, Justin Gagey discovered his patterns. He knew that it was going to be a tough dude. Charles Oliveira might be thinking the same thing too. He's got to catch Tony Ferguson's patterns of just mixes of different variations of combos and punches and kicks and submission holds. He's got like a whole buffet of them. I talked about it with our good friend Jesse. And Charles Oliveira, who just came off of a win against uh, Kevin Lee, and uh, the the uh, back in Brazil, man, I actually had my my uh, my money on Kevin Lee, but so did I, so did I. Yeah, Charles Oliveira. I mean, he he shocked me, and so dominated hey, too. I mean, he dominated him. He submitted him in the third round. So Charles Oliveira, um, I've been seeing this guy just going on a on a streak, and I think he's going to be the more smarter fighter just by catching. Tony Ferguson's uh, combos. No disrespect to Tony Ferguson. If yeah, if Tony Ferguson were to uh, get a win from this match, he has to win this one to get bounced back into the title mix. But just by seeing Charles Oliveira doing really well, this might be a big win for him. And the only way to catch Tony Ferguson is just to make him submit. That's in the in the fifth in That's the third true. round yeah. in the third round because he knows that. Tony Ferguson has been in five-round wars, so 
without a doubt, Charles Oliveira, he's going to have to catch him in the third round because I know in the first and second round, he knows that the uh, Tony Ferguson's Ekukui's engine is just going to keep rolling and rolling and rolling. And so in the third round, he's going to keep uh, rolling, but freaking Oliveira, he's going to have to get him into the uh, triangle choke if that's the possibility because I know how Ferguson can move on the ground. This is Charles Oliveira's chance to get him in the triangle choke. And then uh, you just get him locked in. Hopefully, if from Charles Oliveira's favor, if he doesn't, if Tony Ferguson cannot break out of that chokehold, then uh, he's going to have to tap. You know, if he's, you know, because Tony Ferguson is really good on the ground, but Charles Oliveira, he's going to have to find ways to not make him get out of the ground because he has to keep him trapped. So, my, my, uh, what I, who I think is going to win this one, Charles Oliveira in the Ooh. third round. Yeah, that this is, this is going to be his chance. And, uh, yeah, I think Tony Ferguson's way of, I mean, I love his style. I love his, I love him as a fighter. I just think that his patterns have been also, like you said, Nick, have been catching to him. Justin yeah. Gage, you figure it out. And so, uh, Charles Oliveira, I'm pretty sure he'll, he'll figure it out and I think he'll win this one. But, uh, I'm going with Charles Oliver on this one, but without. I like. If that's the yeah. case, Ferguson should hang up the boots after the match. Then. Uh, and hang it up. I, I'm not going to totally argue with that. I think it's absolutely a possibility. I don't know if it happens. I don't think he's. In, I don't know if he's in the same realm as a lot of these other older guys. But, yeah, I mean, if we're talking about Chris Weidman, maybe hanging him up. We're talking about Cowboy. Ferguson loses two big fights like this in a row. You know, you, you, the lower you drop in the ra- rankings, the more you have to fight. And it's just, it, I, yeah, you have guys like Fizayev sitting there in the lightweight division coming up. And, I, you know, he's not going to beat Gaethje. He's not going to beat Khabib. He's not going to beat McGregor. And if you can't beat Oliveira, I can't disagree with RKJ. Maybe he goes down the weight division or goes up a weight division. I don't know. But that that's, I, I can't disagree with him that much. Um, all right. So. You know it's always a good card in UFC when Eric and I disagree on a fight winner, especially one of the main events. Um, if you didn't, if you, you just want to listen to the UFC stuff, go back and listen to our wrestling talk. We talked half an hour about WWE's bad booking and Roman Reigns versus Goldberg possibility. We also discussed AEW, Impact, all that's been going on in the world of Kenny Omega and everything going on. Um, but for this podcast, we are finished. Next week, we will be talking about... Um, more of this wrestling stuff going on, more of what AEW is doing. Uh, if there's any news about WWE, Anthony Joshua also fights this Saturday uh, in, a, in a big, big time boxing match. If Anthony Joshua loses, we will definitely discuss that. And if he wins, we'll talk about who he should fight next. Uh, we all have opinions on that. So we'll talk about that and much more. And we will also go over the UFC card that we just mentioned as well. Uh, but for this podcast, we are finished. RKJ, take it away. Really quick, Eric, you mentioned Jesse. Jer- uh, Jesse, I just want to say, love you, brother. Love you. Love, love you. you. All right. Got to get you back on, man. Got to get back you on. Absolutely, Jesse. Just take your time, brother. Take your time, okay? As always, raise a glass in the sky and salute the ring, generals. <laughs>